Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I think it's appropriate if you haven't already. If you would stand, I think it's appropriate that we join those that have already prepared their hearts and their minds to get ready for service today. That didn't come to church just to be fed, but came to feed others and to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Worship Him today. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. His name is a great name. His name is above every other name. His name is in the heavens. It's settled in heaven. His word is settled in heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship a great king, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you prepared your hearts and your minds. As we open up with service, we're going to open up with prayer. Let's get in touch with the King of kings. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you today. Lord, we need you today. Move in this service today, Lord. Move in our hearts and our minds, God. Let us get in tune with you, Lord. Lord, I don't want you to get in tune with me, but I need to be in tune with you, Lord, with your word, with your presence, with your kingdom, God. Your kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Hallelujah. I want him to use this. Amen. Let's worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let's worship today. Thank you, Lord. Let's glorify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me today. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens. We proclaim your great name, your great name. We love to Come on. call your name in some pain. We cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name, your great name. Keep Jesus. Go.
When I call your name, when I call your name, the demons tremble at the name. When I call your name, yes, come, yes, come. When I call your name, I'm healed when I'm healed when. When I call your name, I'm set free, I'm set free when. When I call your name, I'm alive when. With Jesus, all things are possible. Things change when we call his name. Every devil, every demon has to flee at the very mention. Yes, God. Oh, hallelujah. God, I love you, Jesus. Lift him up. Blessing when I call. Yes, God. Yes, God. When I call your name, I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name, I feel my blessing when I call. When I call your name, I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name, I feel a shifting when I call you. When I call your name, somebody go. Somebody lift up the name above every name and set him up above it all. Come on, the presence of the Lord is here today. When you call on his name, everything the devil has has to flee. With Jesus, all things are possible. With Jesus, we are victorious today. Much better when I call. When I call your name, I feel much stronger when I call. When I call your name, I feel my blessing when I call. When I call your name, I feel my victory when I call you. Yeah. When I call your name, I feel my shifting when I call. When I call your name, I feel it breaking when I call. When I call your name, I feel a shifting when. Jesus, the presence of the Lord is here today. Oh, hallelujah. If you need a blessing in your soul, the Lord Jesus Christ is here today to touch your heart. If you're full of unrest, the Lord is here to stable your way. Stable the way you think, the way you feel today with Jesus. Hallelujah, all things are possible. God, I thank you, Lord. Jesus, you are holy and wonderful. Oh, hallelujah. God, I thank you, Lord. The Lord is everywhere and he is nowhere absent. In Jesus' name. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Thank you, Lord. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on. No shadow you won't light up, 
mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Holy, overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night denied. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you
of my faith today he is our everything God I love you Jesus God have your way Lord have thine own way Lord Jesus I love you Lord I love you Lord if you need a touch today come on lift him up hey 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 the one I want, you are the one I Away. 
Come on, let's worship the Lord today. Jesus, I thank you, Jesus. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. Hallelujah. Choose you this day in 2021 who you will serve. And I choose Jesus. I choose him. Thank you, Lord. I choose the bridegroom. I choose him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As Moses was standing in front of the burning bush, he just said, well, if I'm going to go to your people, he said, tell me what your name is. He says, I am that I am. And he says, tell them I am sent you. And it says right after that, I've never noticed this, Brother Track. so it says, that's my name forever. Right after that, it says, that's my name forever. And then when Jesus, which I've always read, but now it just makes a whole lot more sweeter for me, when Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. Understand the intimacy of what Jesus is to us. He's the God that not only created everything, created the trees, created heaven and earth, created the waters, the word was without form, and then all of a sudden, then he created a man, and he wanted to be intimate with a man, and wanted to know who we were. Wanted to have, us to have a choice to worship him. Think about that, the great I am, the great king. Brother Mackey, I'll never forget Brother Mackey, he said just a couple weeks ago, said, his name is wonderful. It's just so wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace, the everlasting father. I'm so thankful I choose Jesus today. I'm so thankful I choose Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So thankful I have the revelation to know who Jesus is. So thankful I had one at some point in my life someone talk to me about who Jesus was. And every one of us, if you can hear my voice, understand it's your responsibility to go talk to somebody about who Jesus is. You're, if you're in this room, understand your responsibility. Understand why you're put on this earth is to go tell somebody about Jesus. Brother Anthony had a, has a note in our office, a sign, and it says, be the reason people stay. Be the reason someone comes to church. Just be the reason you draw someone to the house of God. And if they don't come to the house of God, be willing to sit down with them and just tell them about who Jesus is. Just tell them about the lovely name. Amen? Amen, amen. I know you've got to make your way back to your seats. If there's a guest here today, shake their hands. Welcome them to Grace Apostolic Church. Thank you for joining us today, for choosing Grace to worship to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <clears throat> I have just a couple announcements. If you remain standing, we are going to march for offering today. Amen? Amen. I'm excited to march for offering. It just feels like it's part of church. It's a part of giving. It's a part of returning. It's, it's a part of church. So I'm, I'm thankful that we can march today. But I have some uh, heavy announcements. Heavy for this church, but truly a blessing for her, is now she has a reward. Sister Bernice Sloan, who passed away yesterday, yesterday morning, passed away, and uh, and I'm saying this intentionally. It's heavy for this church because that woman was an example to me, a, a woman of proverbs, someone that any woman in this church could look to and say, if I can just be like her, I know I'm going to heaven. Am I speaking the truth? If I just look at her, I know I'm going to make it to heaven. <clears throat> so she has such a great reward. If there's, if there's levels in heaven, if there's a, a ladder 
like Jacob's ladder where you can actually get higher in, in heaven. I just imagine her, imagine her climbing that ladder where she's already made it to a, a level that many of us hope to achieve. It's just that's in what's in my mind. I'm just telling you, we've lost somebody that is precious to this church. But folks, there's a great reward, not just for her, but for all those that follow after her example. Amen? And I'm speaking to the men, too, of humility, of grace, of who she was as a person. Amen? Amen. So this, uh, this Tuesday, this Tuesday coming up, there is a visitation for family only from 9 to 10 a.m., and then from 10 to 11 a.m. is for friends to join the family. And then at 11 a.m. this Tuesday is a memorial service for Sister Bernice Sloan. If you have the ability to make it to church, to make it for that memorial service, I think it would be highly appropriate for you to be here. If you have to take a, day, a couple hours off of work, I'm just telling you the investment that that woman has made in this church and her husband before her has made to this church and to your souls is worth the time to try to make it to church. Amen? Amen. Uh, Brother Matt, you had one more announcement. Friday night, Brotherhood Sisterhood, thank you. Uh, this Friday night, amen. If you're not already standing, we're going to go prayer for this offering. Watch your uh, direction. Ushers, do we have ushers still that, ha that give us direction? Just please follow the crowd, okay? Just follow the crowd. Amen. Let's go to Lord prayer for this offering for the service. Lord, we love you today. Thankful, God, for what you're already doing in this service, Lord for examples of men and women, for pillars in this church that you've given us to follow after and to be an example to my life, Lord, and to many others. Lord, we're asking that you bless the remainder part of his service to preaching today. Preach to our hearts, preach to our minds, give us direction, and bless this offering and tithe, Lord, that we return unto you. Bless it for your kingdom, use it for your kingdom. And we say all these in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to be saved? Isn't it more than just a prayer to pray? More than just a way to heaven? What does it mean to be His? To be born in His likeness? Know that we have a purpose. To be salt and light in the world, in the world. To be salt and light in the world. Let the redeemed the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Will arise, oh, that we would see with Jesus' eyes, we could show the world heaven. Show what it means to be His, to be born in His likeness. Show them they have a purpose to be salt and light in the world. In the world. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. I am redeemed. Say. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed, I am redeemed, I am redeemed, I am redeemed. Aren't you thankful you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? I am redeemed, 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 I am redeemed. To be salt and light. To be salt and light in the world, in the world. To be salt and light in the world. To be salt and
Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Come on, rise up. Rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord stay full. Let the redeemed of the Lord stay full. Let the redeemed of the Lord stay so. Say so. Say so. I am redeemed. Say. I am redeemed. 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 Come on, if you're thankful for that, clap your hands and glorify the Lord. Come on, say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so, say so. God, I thank you, Jesus. God, you're worthy of all the praise. Oh, sweet Jesus, thank you, Lord. Isn't he awesome today? Isn't he worthy of all the praise that we can give him today? Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're so sweet to me, Jesus. Best things ever happened to me, Lord. You're so wonderful to me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy to us. Amen. Don't you like what you feel in the Holy Ghost today? Aren't you glad for liberty and freedom of the Holy Ghost today? In Jesus' name. You may be seated for a few moments of time. Thank you, Lord, for his goodness and mercy. Thank you for standing and being part of uh, the worship today at Grace Epistolic Church. We certainly want to push for our praise and worship. And, man, I enjoyed what I heard when I came into the sanctuary today. Sounded like the noise of war going on in the sanctuary today. You know, before the high priest could ever see the Shekinah glory, you first had to get everything right before that. You couldn't bypass anything to get to the Shekinah glory. You had to first set the stage with the brazen altar and put the sacrifice upon the altar. When you could get the sacrifice right, you could then move to the next phase. And I think today that you were setting the stage and you were putting the sacrifice on the altar, allowing the Lord to do what He's going to do when the people of God set the stage on that altar, and I believe that's what you were doing today, and that when you do that, it sets the atmosphere for miracle signs and wonders that we have been asking the Lord to see, and I heard that uh, our our young people were in the in the youth sanctuary this morning praying together. That the, the lost art of prayer needs to be picked up, because anything great that's going to happen in 2021 is not going to happen without us praying and seeking the face of God. The healing of our nation. And, our, and our, our land is only going to come when we turn from our wicked ways, humble ourselves, and pray and seek his face. Then he'll hear from heaven, amen, and, and do work for us. So, so, so glad for all of you that are here, our guests. Thank you for being here. Yes, we did lose a sweet lady. Uh, Sister Bernice had some, had some great times in her room several times uh, with Brother Ray Sloan and uh, Sister Dreama and Sister Pam Casto, or Sister Pam Sloan now, and uh, just singing some old songs around her bed. Uh, singing there in the room before she passed. So this Tuesday, uh, we will need some singers. If we can get some singers together, I know if you can't be here, uh, the, the family had mentioned also to let you know that we can watch it online. It will be online uh, streaming here for those that can't make it. Some people don't want to get close with COVID. We understand those times that we're living in. So we're certainly going to make it available online as well for those that want to watch uh, the memorial service, dedication of a life of Sister Sloan, who we love very much, who love this church. Uh, she was here, uh, I think the last service she was at was our, was our foot washing communion service, and she was here, and she wasn't feeling great, but she made her way to the house of the Lord because she knew that was the right thing to do. So, so just let's remember that family. And if you can gather Tuesday, uh, certainly do so, but if you can't, we understand you can watch online uh, on our Facebook page and our YouTube page as well. Uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all these things, they're, they're used for a lot of uh, garbage stuff, kind of going through those uh, social media platforms, but man, what a great tool it can be for the church. So if you've not subscribed yet to Grace Upstock Church of Clawson YouTube page, subscribe, uh, it sounds so 
Everyone says, hit the button, subscribe, um, and, and just, just see what's happening at Grace Episodic Church. Then you can, you can share things. If you hear a sermon, or you can share it with your friend and, and share that out to the world. Let them hear. If they're not going to come in here, we can go to where they are. Amen? I mean, I have the word of the Lord I want to speak to you today. If you would stand with me for the reading of the word, Judges chapter 13. Starting with verse number 1. Appreciate our praise team. Never want to go without forgetting to thank them for their their time. A lot of them do a lot of things. They're musicians and people that are involved in our IT and those things. And they were setting up the youth chapel uh, yesterday, spending time here on a Saturday to put that all together. We took our old sound system, put it over there, so we could make that nicer over there. So just things that that are not they're not seen by a lot of people, but they're seen by me, and they're seen especially seen by God. And then that, that lily work that no, one gets the cre- that no one gets credit for, but God gives the credit because God keeps good books. Amen. Judges 13, verse number 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. There was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any clean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto, unto God from the, from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Verse number 8. Then Manoah, so Manoah's wife tells Manoah what she had heard from the angel. And Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send to come again unto us. Look what he says. And teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. Verse 12. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? How shall we do unto him? What a prayer that every parent ought to pray for their children. Lord God, teach me how to raise my children. Teach me how I can lead them and guide them and these children. How, how can I have wisdom to lead my children? Verse Verse number 24 and 25, and we'll be done with our reading. <clears throat> and the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. Finally, verse 25, and the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan, between Zorah and Eshtaol. The Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan, between Zorah and Eshtaol. And we don't know a whole lot about his early years, his teenage years, what he was like in the camp. But we know that the Lord moved him at times and people could see there's something going on in this young person's life. God is touching him. He's on a great path. Things are going well for him. Certainly he's the hope of our camp. Certainly he's the hope for our people. But I want to preach to you for a little bit of time today that sometimes is not enough. Sometimes... If you're going to make it in this world, if you're going to make it through a sinful journey that this world has to offer, being touched by sometimes by God is never going to be enough for you. As my wife said on Wednesday, you got to have a walk with him every single day. Every single day. Everyone say amen to read the word. You may be seated. Brother Wade preached a little bit on Samson uh, some, a little, few, couple, few days ago, a few weeks ago. We are reading in the Bible during a time in the history of Israel called the Times of the Judges. It was after the death of Joshua and Moses and their generation that the Bible said, there arose a generation that knew not the Lord. And because they didn't know the Lord, they got themselves into problems and they began to sin. And God would allow the enemy to come in and torment them and bring them into captivity. But then he would raise up a man or even a woman in Deborah that would become a judge and would help rescue the children of Israel out of the hands of their enemy. And these people were called the judges. 
This was a time before they ever anointed their first king, Saul. And so they went from, from, from following God. Uh, and Moses said, don't follow me, follow God. But they wanted somebody, so God would raise up a man. And finally, God rose up kings. But during this point of time, God was using judges, people to help deliver them. Because there arose a generation that knew not the Lord. It, this happens, generations come that, that know not the Lord because the stories of God's miracles had stopped being told. Remember the story when they went through the, 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 uh, the river, um, Jordan River, and they said, take out the stones, take out these big stones and put them on the side that when the generations of children come by and say, what mean these stones? You can remind them of what God had done for you on this side of the Jordan. And, but what happened, stories of God's miracles somewhere in the generation and genealogies had stopped being told from one generation to the next. Traditional practices established from the beginning of time between God and his people were no longer a priority through the generations within the camps. And whenever history is no longer important, and when stories of experience of what God has done ceases to be told, all you are left with is a generation that doesn't know the Lord. When we have a generation that has forgotten where they came from, they start looking at the fashion and practices of what everyone else is doing around them. And they completely lose the identity of who they once were. The things that meant so much are now profaned and laughed at. Those who have walked away from apostolic truth and apostolic worship will snicker and jeer when they see hungry souls lost in the presence of God trying to find a breakthrough, trying to find God in their worship. These people have forgotten the times they themselves were under the mighty move of God as His Spirit sweetly touched their willing soul. I talked with a young man that grew up in this church, has long been gone. I was his youth pastor all of his life, but now he is a self-proclaimed atheist. And I sat on the phone many times with him at length while he was trying to explain to me why he is so right and how he has learned so much that there really is no God. And in all the conversation, I asked him, I said, I remember as your youth pastor. I remember seeing you around the altar. I remember hearing you speak in tongues. If God is not real, was your experience fake? Did you not really get something from God at those times? What happened from then to right now? And his response was, well, it's easy for kids to be worked up by adults. Telling them how they should respond at an altar. Basically, he was saying, I was moved by emotion. Because the church expects us to be emotional, and really, I don't even know if it was a real experience, but I know that it, you, you, you preach it hard and you say people should be emotional. And so we respond in kind to the emotion of that moment. And so I would warn everyone under the sound of my voice today to make sure that you get more than an emotional touch in God's presence. I would urge you today to boldly approach the throne of grace and stay in God's presence until your bones are saturated in the power of the Holy Ghost so that you know that you know that you know that you've been touched by the hand of God. No one can convince me otherwise. I've been touched by the Holy Ghost. We will bury a sweet woman this week who stood for God her whole life. And there must be those around us who will carry the zeal of worship like those that have gone before us. We must fight for our identity. As apostolic people, if you look at the book of Nehemiah, we spend much time in the book of Nehemiah talking about the building of the wall, how 
Nehemiah help people build the wall and what all the things he'd done and all the great things God had done. And we spend time preaching on the wall being built and the record time and all those things, what God done. That's great. But I will tell you that Nehemiah had a tougher task ahead of him with these people than just building a wall. For what Nehemiah's task was, he was dealing with people that had lost their identity because they are a remnant of a generation that didn't know the Lord. So their grandchildren did not know their identity of what they were. That's tough to bear. We can get some mortar and stones and build a wall if you know how to build anything. That's fine. But dealing with people that have lost their identity, that's a task. I like what it says, interesting, in chapter 13 of one of Nehemiah. On that day, they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people. And therein was found written that the Ammonites and the Moabites should not come into the congregation of God forever. So they open up the law, they start reading again in the word, they go back to the source, and they realize they're doing all these things they shouldn't do because no one was reading out of the book of the law anymore. So Nehemiah comes, helps them build a wall, but he says, listen, if we're going to establish a, a city again, we've got to know our identity. So what's happening? They're letting all sorts of people in. They even let a man who hates God live in the temple. Where they offered sacrifices and treasury. They let him live in the house of God. And he hated God's people. They, they, they removed, finally Nehemiah got him out of there. It was great. But they started doing all these things they shouldn't be doing. Why? Because they had lost their identity. Here they are. They're buying and selling on the Sabbath day. They're just, you know, they're coming in and out. They're, 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 they're squashing the grapes and doing all these things. And all these things are doing. In fact, they've got other nations coming to the gates of Jerusalem. And they're selling them all their goods on the Sabbath day. Man, this is great for people that don't go to church on Sundays. Right? Well, Sunday, Saturday, whatever you want to call it. Whatever. It doesn't mean it, Sabbath one day is not higher than to God than another. But here they are on the Sabbath day of that time. All these other nations are selling their products to the Israelites on the Sabbath day and profaning it. And Nehemiah says, get out of here. He says, when, the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when it gets dark on the gates before the Sabbath, you shut and you lock those gates. And don't let anybody in here again. So what all the other nations do, they, they camped out in front of the gates, hoping the gates would open up. Nehemiah said, are you still here? It's been two days. Now I know my people got some money, but we're not buying your stuff. We're going to find our identity again. He says, listen, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to lay hands on you. It's going to be a bad problem for you. And the Bible says all the outsiders that were used to coming in and selling their goods went away. Because Nehemiah was helping them again find their identity. How do you lose your identity as a church? When you raise up a generation that knows not the Lord. You stop talking about what God did then and will do today. You stop sharing the stories of the miracles. And you lose what you were as a people. 23 of, verse 23 of chapter 13 of Nehemiah. Look at this. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. When you lose your identity, you also lose your language. You forget what the language is of your people. Words that entice revival, things that you should talk about that would excite us to worship. We no longer have those words in our vocabulary because we've lost our identity. One commentary says that the dialect the children spoke could have been similar to Hebrew, but from accent and the use of peculiar words almost unintelligible to the Jews. 
What had happened to the people? What had happened when you lose your identity? You start marrying people that have no idea of what your true roots are. And all of a sudden you have a mixed hodgepodge of you don't know what you are. You don't know if you want to be in the world or you don't know if you want to be in the church. I'm telling you, you better find out what you are. You better go back to your roots. You better get back on your face and realize what God brought you from. How does this happen? It happens because these people stopped following the principles in the word of God. These people allow things to slip and we allow things to slip among you. You raise up a generation that knows not the Lord and does not know their own language. And this is why Moses in his word and God's word was so emphatic in Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk to them once a month. Why? Because he knew what they're getting into. And he knew the only way you're going to stay holy in a sinless nation around you is you got to have this in your heart and you got to teach it to your children. And you shall be a great example. By taking your kids to church once a week and letting the Sunday school teachers teach them all about Jesus. and all, No, no, he didn't say that. He said, when you're going to teach your children, he, he says, teach them unto your children when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. What God was saying, God was requiring conversation to be with your children every single day. Sometimes it's not enough. When you want to, it's not enough. You better talk to your children every single day that you can. If you want to talk to your kids when the moment is right, guess what? The moment will never be right. Jesus must be the center of what our families are. Our kids, our young people get a godless message preached to them every single day. And we will lose our future if we only talk about Jesus sometimes. Because sometimes isn't enough. Oh, I had a real good heart to heart. Feel good. And then we go months and months and months. And we lose our language. And we forget what we were because we don't talk about it. So I feel very fortunate because I'm young enough to where I'm pretty, like, you know, cool. Thank you. But I'm old enough to remember revival, like two and three week revivals. And waking up and people dancing and, and shoes flying everywhere. I remember being a young kid, and after a good service, we had good service, we had some people in the front row, and Brother Ralph Cole was in the front, front pew. Gray-headed Ralph Cole. Had his dark glasses. Your, your grandfather. And I remember, man, you know, he'd do the sh Cole shuffle. <laughs> or was it like this? Yeah, that heel first, heel the old man got under the, say it respectfully, in his old age, showing us the cold shuffle into the presence of God. That was him exuberating himself in the presence of God. What do you do? <laughs> so, but he's on the front pew, and I remember in his old age, he was laughing like an eight-year-old schoolboy. I mean, just laughing uncontrollably. And I, at that age, at that young age, probably eight or nine, I recognized he was drunk in the Holy Ghost. He was drunk in the Holy Ghost. I want to ask us, how refined have we become? Is that too old-fashioned for us to say someone can be drunk in the Holy Ghost? I don't want us to lose our language, folks. 
you know, we can adopt surrounding messages and surrounding languages and bring it into our church. I was touched by his Holy Spirit. I was touched by his Holy Spirit. Listen, folks, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. You can make it pretty if you want to, but it's still got to be about the blood. It's still got to be about the cross. It's still got to be about power and Holy Ghost in filling evidence of speaking in other tongues. I don't want to lose our language. I was full with Holy Ghost and fire. But if we don't keep that in the forefront of our apostolic identity, there will be a generation that no longer knows what it looks like. I bring your attention to the story of Samson, the miracle baby boy who was born into promise. Now they say it's not how you start, but it's how you finish that counts. But I would say Samson had a pretty awesome start as far as boys go. I'm not sure how many of you have been born to a barren mother. Now in our day, we know things happen. It can happen. You can be born to a barren woman, can have a baby, and we know that. So that's not so, so powerful in itself. But how many of you had an angel come down? Hey, parents, angel knocked on the front door. You're here. I'm, I'm Gabriel. I just want to tell you, we're gonna have a baby, and the baby's gonna be powerful. Mom, Dad, you probably had a couple angels. One angel had to set you down and say, this is going to be tough for you guys, but I'm going to tell you this right now. <laughs> He's going to give you all sorts of headaches in his life. But, but none of us have been welcomed by the, uh, the sound of our birth by an angel. Man, this guy had power. He had a beginning. Not too many of us have had that kind of start. Samson had an unbelievable start. He was called before he was ever even born to be a judge over Israel. His parents prayed for wisdom on how to raise such a promised child. His mother devoted her own self, her own life to being careful of what she ate and where she went and what she saw because she didn't want to affect the baby on the inside of her. When Samson is born and we hear very little detail about his early life except for and the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp. Another translation says the Lord began to stir him at times in the camp. How many of us can remember the first stirrings of God in our life? The early years at the altar when you felt God stirring your soul for the very first time. You went from coloring books to standing at the altar and feeling something you've never felt before. And you all of a sudden, at a young age, six, seven, eight, you felt this was real. And you were stirred by the hand of God as a child in the presence of God. Or maybe an adult, maybe you're older and you came in and you laughed and joked, oh, this is great, this is, these people are crazy, but you went to the altar for yourself and you raise your hands and you felt God stirring you for the first time and you realize even as an adult this thing is real Samson was on his way he was on the right course he was on his way to fulfill his destiny as a judge in Israel but I cannot get over the fact that the stirring of God only happened at times and a sometimes touch is never enough. In 25 and 13 of Jeremiah, we find that God is doing these things. And God is uh, 
this chapter 13, verse 25 of, of, of Judges, that, that God is moving on him at times. But instantly in, in 14, chapter 14, verse 1, and Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. He's feeling God as a young man. He's feeling God stirring him, but instantly he's going down to Timnath to look for a woman out of a camp that his parents were so, so upset about these things. Samson, we see Samson eating honey from the carcass of a dead lion. We find Samson murdering men over a bet to get their clothing. All of this was done when God was not moving on him at times. But then Samson would be moved by God at times and he would kill Philistines. He would tie foxtails together and burn down their fields. He would take an animal jawbone and kill 1,000 men. But remember, a sometimes touch is never enough. You must walk with God every single day. Chapter 15 of Judges. 1,000 men are dead. God moved powerfully for Samson. Only for the next account, chapter 16 again, verse number 1. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot and went in unto her. God had just touched him mightily and man, a thousand men are dead around him. He sees what God had done and then the next thing he picks up his stuff and goes to Gaza and finds himself a harlot to be with. How can he go from a Sunday experience for Monday to lose it all because of what we're viewing, what we're looking at, what we're getting into? Because I'm telling you, sometimes experience with God is not enough to keep you. You will not have your joy. You will not be an overcomer. You will not have true peace in the Holy Ghost. Unless you are walking with Jesus every single day, I'm telling you. I'm so glad there was a sound of war in the house on Sunday. But guess what? If you don't feel God for the next six days, what happens here is never enough for you. Here comes Samson. He just moved by God. God did some amazing things. But Samson finds a harlot and gazes and went into her. Can I tell you, sometimes touch of God is not enough to keep you from sin. Don't think a little dance in the Holy Ghost or a little goosebump from God only every so many Sundays is enough to keep you saved all week long. We need to wake up on Monday and seek after the face of God as strong as we did on Sunday. We need to have a, 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 an expectation that God's going to move on me today just like we do on Sunday because sometimes is never enough. Too many of us are satisfied feeling God sometimes. And if we start settling for feeling God sometimes... We will become like those in Jeremiah chapter 2, 32. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. That's a long way from teach your children every day. That's a long day from teaching them the morning and the noon and the night. That's a long ways when my people have grown comfortable with every sometimes. Every once in a while, I don't want to get comfortable with that. I need him too much. Finally, on the knees of Delilah, Samson is asleep. His head is shaved. All of his strength is gone. And he's awakened by Delilah, saying, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. And the next words we hear from Samson are words that will live in infamy in our word of God. Samson, not knowing it, says, I will go out at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. 
Because people who only feel God sometimes don't know the difference when God's there and when God's not. So we come to church. We get around the people of God. And we do our thing because it's what we do every Sunday. And we go through the motions. I'll shake myself on Sunday and I'll get a good blessing. And you don't even know God has departed you on Monday. Because all you're familiar with is what you should feel on Sunday. And God says, i got so much more for you all week long. I've got intimate moments and times with you. That, and all your feelings, you think you're going to get revival and you're going to experience here. And I've left you. And you wonder why you go outside the doors and Philistines are waiting for you and you fall before you even get out of the parking lot. It's because you're satisfied with just, just times of God. And you wonder why I don't get victory. Because you don't get victory Sunday by Sunday. You get victory every single day of your life. Let's all stand. His eyes have been put out. He's not nearly the man that he began to be. He looks weak, bad haircut. That's always a problem. It's always a problem. And he's being made fun of. So the Philistines decide, hey, let's make sport of him at a big event. Everyone in the land will be there. Let's all get around the Coliseum and we'll make fun of this man that was so powerfully used by God. Show everyone how much of a man he really is. And the Bible says when the lad put his hands on the pillars... That we see Samson pray to God. And you'll find that in Judges 16, verse 28, this is the only time in his life that we know of in the Word of God that Samson actually prayed. Now we know after the jawbone experience, he said, I'm going to die of thirst. But he wasn't praying. He was complaining, I'm going to die here. He wasn't looking for guidance. He was saying, Lord, I'm going to die. You're letting, I'm, going to just, I'm going to die. And God clave a jawbone in his bone. He drank from it. And he was revived again. This is the only place in all of his life that is recorded in the word of God that Samson said, oh, Lord, help me this one more time. Avenge me of my enemies. And he pushed against the, the pillars and they fell. And that defeat from the Philistines was greater than anything else. And that's, that's okay, that's fine. But what if Samson, with all of his start, would have started every single day? Oh God, I know you've touched me in times, but at times it's not enough. I know things have been great. I know you've done great things. But God, I need you more than just sometimes. I need you every day. Because God, I'm still a child. I remember when I was 8 and 9 and 10 years old. I didn't have any preaching engagements. I didn't have anybody calling my phone asking me to be a young preacher and come preach for us and be our youth pastor. But that wasn't a reason why I was by my bed praying. I just want to know him. But do you know? I've not lost that need to know him today as much as I did when I was eight years old. I've not got to a place where I know it all. I still need him. And I'm so thankful for young people and adults and people praying. But how awesome it would be for people and young people to find a place by their bed in their room and turn their bed on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night or a Thursday night into a house of prayer. Just because you realize Sunday was great, but now I need something for today. I need a move of God today. I, I, I'm, I don't know about you, but I can feel so far from God from Sunday to Wednesday. I don't know what it is. 
I'm telling you, there is a spirit of oppression in our world that's trying to wear out the saints. And if you don't let God revive you every day, you will be lost. You will be a has-been. You will be a could-have-been. But God, give me a touch fresh every single, every single day. Today, the service is a call to recommitment. This is a call to those that are cold and weary in the Lord that you remember what it was like to feel God's touch on your life. And I'm telling you, He is so close to you. You don't have to run too far to find a God that's been waiting for you. If you would come with a humble heart and say, God, here I am, I promise you, the Lord will touch you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I wonder if you want to come at this time and love the Lord for a while. Come on, I love you, Lord. I want you to start something in me here today, Lord. That's going to carry with me all week long, Jesus. Oh, here I am, Jesus. Here I am, Jesus. I don't want to lose my language. I want what my grandma and grandpa had. I want what my mom and dad had. I want something. I want my roots. I want heritage. Come on, sometimes is enough. Every once in a while is it enough. Come on, you gotta feel him every day. You gotta have an experience with him. Oh, help us, Jesus. At the of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. Give me a fresh touch, oh Lord. From beginning to Give me a fresh touch, oh Lord. It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, and nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Because Jesus healed the center. At the center of it all, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing ever matters. Oh, uh-huh. 
from my heart to the head. Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all from your heart in Jesus' name. From my heart to the head. Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the head. Oh 